Okay, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about mark making. That blank canvas can be so intimidating. A lot of people just don't even know where to start. Or sometimes you just kind of need a little bit of a push or an oomph. And sometimes you have an idea of what you're wanting to do, but you need a little something on the background first just to kind of break it up for yourself to get started with. So a couple of things that I often will use for mark making is acrylic paints. There's black and white here. There's some watercolor paints, there's some watercolor pencils, some wax crayons, there's a blue acrylic paint, and then I've got various tools. So I've got this cool little like wheel that you would use for if you were sewing to do patterns, I believe it's for a bamboo stick that'll make nice lines, two different palette knives, a wash brush, a brayer, a bristle brush, and a handmade brush. Then, of course, I have some natural elements over here, like a wasp nest and a loofah sponge and just some sticks and twigs. And I've got a feather brush, which is really fun, too. There's just all kind of stuff that you can use, and the sky's the limit. Nothing, don't stop at anything, because nothing can't be used, because it's kind of fun to do it that way. So, I'm going to move these supplies over to the side, and I'm going to get started with the very basic, which is to use a color wash brush and all I'm going to do is I'm going to wet this brush really really well and sometimes what's really fun is just to take some watercolor paint and not even really focus on exactly what you're doing with it. What I can tell you that works very nicely for me is don't be contained just to the actual paper size because see how like this flows off the paper and this flows off the paper that's really great because it keeps it interesting and it keeps your mind not just only centered on the paper what's on the paper it kind of makes you wonder what else is happening out there so that makes it kind of fun so this is a color wash brush and you can cover a lot of surface area with that one brush with a watered down acrylics or regular acrylics or watercolors whatever you decide to use i enjoy using watercolors on one of my very first steps because because you can do anything over them and so if you decide you want to go this route or that route you can use anything over them whereas if you put oil or for instance these wax crayons once you put this wax down it's going to repel anything that's water so you want to use or what i like to use is watercolors or some sort of a water soluble product that will um allow you to go on top of it acrylics work well as long as um, they don't dry as long as you keep active with your piece they won't dry completely and then you can go over them with other products but for me i like watercolors the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to grab a little bit of um, a couple of these watercolor pencils which are one of my favorite supplies to have in a toolbox and i'm literally just going to make marks and just flow around the page. I'm not even being very specific about how I'm using them. I am going to try to uh, use harmonious colors, although sometimes it's fun to grab high contrasting colors. It's like right now I'm not going to throw this red in because I'm not sure what else I'm going to be doing and I don't want to make it too much of a hot mess yet. I want to be able to come back and go over it with something if I want to. I would say this green, this kind of chartreuse very yellow green color is going to be my biggest um, kind of different color that I'm going to use on this particular piece. But yeah, you just kind of make, make shapes, make marks. There's no rhyme or reason to it. I'm just kind of having fun with it and picking some colors that are dark, some that are light. Sometimes I will write words in it really fast that nobody else would maybe even know what the word was because I wrote it, you know, so intentionally non-legible. Um, okay, so I did pull in this little light coral, which is a little bit more high, high contrasting than that green, which is totally fine because it's fun at this stage. It's not, it's not a big deal. Um, I do have a tendency to kind of go around the edges. However, that's not necessary. It's good to go in the middle also sometimes. I typically don't leave something right in the center, but totally okay to do so. So then what I often will do is come back with some of this wax crayon because at this stage of the game, I'm okay with doing so. 
um, I'm just going to make some a few shapes and marks and see what happens, but I'm not going to do too much with it because I, um, I, because they can't, they can't really be, I could cover it up probably with this black acrylic, but you can't cover it up with much. And in fact, all I'm going to do is keep these like shades of blue all together. And that way it kind of works for my end product, but I'm not even thinking about an end product right now, to be honest with you. So just to show you what a couple of these tools look like, you can come back and do this with the black for instance, and just kind of make, make marks with it. Um, I again am a little bit into the whole balance thing. And so I'm wanting to go like opposites of each other, like so. And, um, as opposed to like both of them so heavy on this side, then I'm going to actually come and put some white on top of some stuff, but it's not going to really, it's going to blend a little bit with stuff because it is uh, there's watercolors in there and because I'm rubbing with it pretty hard but that's the white I'm actually gonna add a little bit more white because one of my very favorite things to do I am a big fan of palette knives I love palette knives let me show you one more thing though first before I do that but you can get some of stuff on this and see how it on this little pattern tool pattern making tool you can get some paint on there and roll it around it also is great like if you already have paint on your paper you can actually use this to go over what's already existing on the page but it's kind of fun because it leaves these little like dash marks on your on your artwork and again you kind of aren't really thinking about where it's going to be because it's just you're just rolling around with it really fast so the bamboo stick makes just simple lines as you can imagine and you can do like this with it if you'd like again there's no right or wrong to this it's just mark making and some of it is just to free your mind and open up your page to be prepared for whatever it is that you're going to paint. Um, this particular paper is just like drawing paper. And so it's not um, really prepared for other uh, product, like turning it into a painting. Like it won't hold up to a whole, whole bunch of stuff. This is a brayer, which is fantastic, and I will show you how that works. I'm gonna grab some of this white paint, and I'm going to brayer with it. And that, you literally just roll around. You can tell that the black is still a little bit wet, so it's turning it a little bit gray, and that's okay. This isn't the prettiest thing that's happening, but that's okay, because we're gonna come back with a whole bunch of other stuff later. This is one of my other favorite things to do because I am a palette knife person. I like to use palette knives a lot. I think that they make really cool marks like this. See, I have it on its side. I've loaded my palette knife and I'm just moving it around and I am being completely random with it. And I'm palette knifing. And making really cool, like I kind of like how it does this fan thing there. Marks, just lots and lots of marks, just making marks because after this is dry, a lot of this can be covered up if you want it covered up. It doesn't have to be covered up. You can leave it, you know, as it, as it is. Um, there's lots of options to play with it. So that was this shape. This is a straight one, which as you can imagine, when you're making lines, it's actually going to make the same type of line. But because this one's much longer, you can actually make bigger swooshes. So I just swooshed and then I carved out and you can see right there where it took away some of that paint. I love the way that that does that. That is like one of my very favorite things like this and then go like carve it off kind of almost it's um 
this under spot was already kind of dark. But there are a whole bunch of marks right there and that will allow you to kind of open up and be free with what you're gonna be painting next. So keep in mind to do that because it really is a good practice for allowing yourself to be free with how you're gonna do things. And um, again, lots and lots of options for what you're gonna do when you're using these watercolor pencils incidentally you can put them on dry or you can dip them in the water and come back and color with them a little bit with water on them and they they more are like a, a watercolor as opposed to just a watercolor pencil so those are those are quite fun the more that i get into this black paint over here that's still wet the more it's going to kind of smudge it around so honestly it really does just have to dry and um but you can carve into it it is so cool to do that with these with a palette knife that's i just love palette knives because i feel like they're a super versatile tool that's mark making that's how i make marks that's how i often start i intentionally use darker colors to be able to see it easily enough and it's supposed to just be fun and get you over the fact that you have a white canvas and now what i mostly have is predominantly black canvas but it's got cool marks and it's ready to go for the next step for instance if, if i was going to be using oil paint and cold wax this is a beautiful background to start with so mark making don't underestimate it it's lots of fun you could cut this up and use it in collage tons of stuff that you can do with it that's a couple of examples so happy creating to you and i'll see you next time